Good morning. Happy Friday. Today's reading, your hands, your touch, your engagement with the world. I like that. We forget about our interconnectivity with the world. We've been so long indoors. Using your hands is one of the main ways you interact with the world. Take a second now to think about how much you've already done with your hands today. Pushing, pulling, opening, arranging, lifting. Your hands are powerful, but they can also perform delicate, intricate tasks. And quite often scientists will say that our um, intricacy or muscular control of all the things of our hands are kind of what sets us apart from other primates. When you touch another person with your hands, the way in which you touch is a form of communication. You can touch roughly, gently, tentatively, or confidently, harshly, or in a loving manner. This message is also true of how you place your hands on your own body. Today, draw your awareness to the ways in which you touch and notice how it impacts your, uh, you and others. So maybe today, without even thinking about it, are you as tender with your own body, mentally and with your hands, as you would be to your grandchild or your best friend or your partner? Um, I thought I would choose an animal card. We haven't done this in a while. And uh, as we approach spring, I'm noticing more and more animals coming out of the woodwork in my everyday walks. Um, even when I'm driving, I notice, of course, there's a lot more skunks out now. Now is when they start to have babies. I'm hearing so many spring birds. They sound happy and hopeful. Oh, and what do I get? Hummingbird, lighten up. So maybe we'll do our bird poses today. For some reason, we draw hummingbird card often in class. And is it the universe telling us to lighten up all the time, whether it's our practice? Have you ever seen images of the laughing Buddha or the laughing Jesus? Well, these spiritual masters and many others knew that life was not to be taken all that seriously. Life is very transitory and fleeting, and although we may interpret life as solemn, usually not that a big deal. Don't take everyday life too seriously. It's meant to be enjoyed, have a good time. And even with your practice, have a good time. There are, there are tragedies and losses, and it's best to give yourself time and space to grieve them, but release the tears, let them fall away, and eventually let your grief transmute to joyful memories. So I like that. Even if you're going through something dark, can you flip that idea of what's in your brain from sadness what you're missing to what you can celebrate. Okay, let's come to the mat. We will do some uh, different bird poses. I love doing this series uh, with my children and when I do kids yoga. So you're gonna bring bum to heels and slowly lower down. Arms by your side, palms turned up. I instantly notice some tension in my lower back, so I'm gonna consciously press the lower back down and release. Press it down and release. Press it down and release. And I'm gonna bring my knees to chest, rocking side to side, little boat. We wanna release any tension in the lower back so that we have movement in the upper and lower halves of our bodies when they connect through our hips and lower back. Let's take our knees to the floor on the left, double leg spinal twist, right arm open to a T. Let the weight of the right shoulder come to the earth so there's a nice opening behind the heart. Back to center, take those knees to the floor on the right, left arm opens to a T. And notice if one half of your upper back or shoulders is tighter or resistant than the other. I'm noticing my dominant shoulders having a harder time releasing. Back to center, little boat. Right leg in, left leg extends all the way down. I'm pulling that right leg in. Left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. Back to center, little bow. Left leg in, right leg flex in the air. We do that flex, A, it's to wake us up mentally and physically. Deep stretch of the back of the hamstring. Right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist.
Back to center, little boat. And I'm gonna take those knees wide for a moment. I really enjoyed how much hip work we did this week. You might choose to stay passive or constantly press the inner knees wide. Flex. Option to walk your hands down the shins so we're in a frog pose on our back. And finally coming to set up for happy baby. Hands behind the thighs. Eventually coming into full happy baby and rocking side to side. Soles of the feet come together, possibly binding. Now, what kind of sounds occur in your neighborhood that remind you of spring? Today, I swear I heard a robin. The other day, I swear I heard a robin, and it was a different call, so maybe they are calling to their mates already. Might be a little early. Feet to the mat, knees out wide. Um, I keep seeing Canada geese already, and again, I think it seems early, but maybe they know something we don't know. Knees close, and I'm gonna bring the thighs into my chest, pressing the lower back down before I release my feet into the air. So you can let them dangle for a moment, they do not have to be fully extended. Or you can start to play with pointing and flexing, straightening them. I'm noticing that if you spend time at a desk, really tight ankles occur. Especially if you have a habit of hooking your feet under your chair, which I do. I'm gonna come medium wide and roll out those ankles. Point and flex, fan the toes. And I'm gonna to go as wide as I comfortably can. Point and flex. Close the legs. Let's take our strap in our hand. Right leg in behind. Left leg lowers all the way down. We'll give a little bit of love to this right leg. Point and flex. Roll out the ankle, and now we use the strap to help us, stirring that leg. Both straps in the right hand, we're going to take that leg out to the side. I think Outlander premieres this weekend if you are a fan. This music reminds me of it. Taking that leg to the sky, strap in the other hand and across the midline or all the way over. That feels delicious. Back to the sky, get rid of the strap, little boat or egg beaters. Feet in the air, flex. Right leg's gonna lower out of the way. And we're gonna give some love to our left leg. Oh, so tight. Point and flex. Fan the toes, strap in the ball of the left foot. Press your heel to the sky or stir that leg. Your body's gonna tell you what you need. Both straps in the left hand and take that leg out to the side without tipping the right. Excuse me. Taking that leg back into the sky, strap in the right hand across the midline. Maybe stop there or go all the way over to a full spinal twist. Back to the sky, get rid of the strap, little boat, or egg beaters. Take our feet to the mat. We'll do a quick thread the needle. Right foot flexes onto left knee and just open that. Maybe massage the hip. And then bring that left thigh towards you. Oh. So our body does a little dance of tension. I press the right knee away like I'm opening a gate. Pull the left thigh towards me. Wow. Where do you feel that? Oh. It's one of those love-hate poses. This pose will help us when we do a bunch of other poses later because it's helping hip mobility. Let's cross it over and come with the shoelace. And then release, shake it out. Feet to the mat, left foot flexes up to right knee, open. Bring that towards you.
option to press the left knee away away pulling the right knee towards you and this is definitely my tighter side and then we'll turn into shoelace left over right which is your favorite bird pose shake it out we're going to roll on our side and pause close your eyes two breaths mini break And then slowly press yourself upright. You're going to choose which form of child's pose suits you today. Let's all tuck our toes and press back. And that adds a nice stretch. Some believe that when you tuck your toes and press back, whether it's this variation or this variation, you're uh, stimulating the pineal gland in the brain. Not sure all the benefits to it, but it's something that... <laughs> I might just hang out here for a bit. And we haven't done our flowy cat cow for a while, so I'm going to tuck the toes, press the mat away, maybe come into extended child's pose. That becomes my cow. Chin to chest, cat, pelvis forward, chest between arms, look up, cow. Cat, press mat, look forward, cow. Flowing. Let's do five flow throughs at your own pace. And finally, undo extended child's pose. Coming back to tabletop, we're going to tuck our toes, walking into a forward fold, let your head really go. Where do you feel this here? Is it more in your upper body or in the backs of your legs? Arms to the side, rise, reach, 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 reach. Exhale, fold, swan dive. Half back, plant, lower all the way down, sleeping cobra. Inhale. Exhale, pick up only your head, chest glued to the floor, elbows pull in. Press back, downward dog. And I'm really going to attempt to bring those heels to the floor. My calves and my hamstrings are pretty tight. Right foot forward, left foot back. You're going to choose high or low lunge. Hands release, feet together, full, rise, heart center. And I'm going to do it a little quickly because I want to create some heat. Especially if you're finding it chilly this morning, minus 12, I already went up for my walk. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, plant, lower all the way down. Inhale, sleeping cobra. Exhale, pick up your chest. Press back, downward dog. Option to pedal again. Is one leg tighter than the other? Left foot forward, right foot back. Rise, hands release. Feet together, full, rise, heart center. One more on each side, inhaling up, exhale, fold. Half back, fold, plant, however you want to get down today. Sleeping cobra. Exhale, pick up your heart. We'll go a little higher into up dog. Rolling over the toes into down dog. Right foot forward, left foot back. Rise, hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. One last side, inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, plant, lower, sleeping cobra. Exhale, pick up your heart, look forward, baby cobra. Press back, downward dog. Left foot forward. Right foot back, rise, hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Wow, that was fun. So quite often when I think of bird, for some reason the flamingo is one of my favorite ones, which is technically a variation of tree. I'm gonna use that to bring everything down. So we're gonna stand on our feet, equal distance apart, Shift the weight to left foot, into the right foot, 
kind of establishing your base is going to become the base of this balance pose. Eventually, left foot becomes my standing foot, and I'm either coming into a mini tree, foot to inner ankle, calf, or flex on the outside, flamingo. We're going to stay here for five breaths. I kind of sprung this upon you. Inhale, one. Exhale. If I'm swaying, that's natural, but you want to root down through all four points of the foot. You want to engage the glutes to center. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Flex, flex, engage. Exhale. And inhale, five. Exhale, release. Other side. You might find one side more stable than the other. I like to bring the ball of the foot down, spread the toes, and then drop them down, anchoring all the points of this foot to the floor. Left foot's coming inside the ankle, on the outside, so I'm either in a tiny tree or flex on the outside, cat, uh, flamingo. You might choose hands at heart center, T, warrior one, yoga steeple. I'm gonna start with yoga steeple. Inhale one. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale, four. Exhale. And last one. Inhale, five. Exhale, release. Nice. While we're standing, let's do our eagle. I saw this huge, I always think of the eagle and the hawk is similar. Huge hawk, wingspan was crazy big. And then when it was finally all folded up in my friend's front porch yesterday on Mark Street, the thing had to have been this big. So, finding equal footing on the, I'm gonna come on left foot, right foot. Is one side easier for you to walk on than the other? So you wanna think about stability. A lot of these poses, even though there's some flexibility, the balance and stability is to calm the mind. That's the whole point of these balance poses. Some of you I know are attracted to them and some of you do not like them at all. So we'll start with the arms and actually as a quick stretch, I'm gonna take my strap, zombie arms, try to tear that and I might do a tiny movement side to side. In this situation, the smaller the movement, the more I feel it in my shoulders. So, feet are one fist width apart, arms are shoulder width apart, engage the core, head is stacked, and can you tear the strap and do a tiny side to side movement with your own resistance? That's intense. Now I'm gonna come a little higher. I might need to slide my arm further down the strap. Tiny movement, engage the core, tear, and tiny movement. Now, each time I go higher, depending on your shoulder mobility, you might be moving the strap higher. Tear the strap, increasing blood flow to that shoulder. Option to add the tiny movement with everything engaged. Maybe you'll go a little higher. Everyone's shoulders are different. Let's bend the elbows and pull it behind you. Oh my, almost like you're lifting weights. Now, here's the final piece. Option to start to straighten the arms behind you. Oh, some of us this is going to happen, some it is not. Today I'm feeling tight pecs and a lot of tightness in here from desk work. We're going to do that two more times. Maybe the next two won't be quite so slow. Zombie arms, lift, tear at the top, and take them all the way back. Woo. This music reminds me, I have a lot of friends here in Canada that are from different parts of the British Isles. And I know some of them had to say goodbye to certain family members yesterday. And that must be really hard to say goodbye to this other part of your life. And how, far, how often do you feel the need to go back to the British Isles and visit if that's where your roots are? Actually, we have a couple students who are British. Oh my gosh. And one more time. Woo. Zombie arms. Rise and take it back. So another variation I like to do to open up the chest that we're going to need for our eagle pose. Take the strap, fold it in half, take it behind you. Arms are, you can see this, my hands are the width of my shoulders. Engage your core and start to lift 
So I'm keeping my body straight, but I'm lifting this up. Again, I notice the pack tightness from desk work is inhibiting me from doing this effortlessly. So I might lift it up and down a little. I might bend my knees and let it lift behind me. Oh, I like it better staying upright. Side to side, up and down. Pull and get rid of that strap. Here we go. Let's do, um, I call them doctor's scrub arms, nurse scrub arms, zombie arms, karate chop arms. Right into left, intertwine. If I can't make the bind, I'm going to stretch out one arm, right into left. Option to go up and down a few times, and release. Other side, this is what I'm gonna do if I can't make the bind. Left arm into right, pull it across the midline without turning my torso. And anyone who's on the computer a lot, please tell me you're feeling that. Otherwise, scrub arms. Left into right, make the bind. Option to go up and down a few times. And shake it out. Nice. Okay, let's see what the leg version of this pose is. You all know the drill. Left foot is my standing leg. I always visualize a bird, especially a heron, where they tend, a flamingo, maybe they're related, they tend to stand on one leg. So left is my standing leg, right leg tap over, or sit down, engage the core, or can you sit and bind, tuck that foot in there. And I'm gonna use hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Let's take two more breaths here. So you're squeezing the thighs together as you sit down and try not to fall and release. Other side, right leg is a standing leg, left leg steps over or sit down or can I bind and sit? Hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Smile. Three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. <laughs> Exhale. Release. Here's where the magic happens. We're going to put upper body flexibility in focus, lower body flexibility focus, put them together and make our eagle. Left foot lands, right leg over. I'm not gonna sit yet. Karate chop arms, right into left, bind. Maybe I'm gonna sit further. Here's where I'm falling. And you know why I'm falling? Uh, mainly because my hips are tight. Option to bind that right foot behind the left calf. Staying upright, some people forward fold. I'm not going to, three breaths. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two. Exhale, and inhale three, squeeze those thighs together for stability. Exhale, release. Can we bring that stillness to our practice on the other side? Remember our sides are sisters, not twins. Right leg, standing leg, left leg, step over. Karate chop, left into right. Option to sit a little deeper. Listen to your body, three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale, inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale, release. What's the counter pose for this? I might use my lazy squat or come into my full squat. Very nice. And I'm just to mess with you, our final pose which falls in our bird category, crow. So, because I'm super tight, I'm not feeling it today, but I think it's good to do something that where you, as my teachers you always say, this is a pose you ultimately get out of your head. So, variations would be block, stepping on the block, and this is where I feel like a little gargoyle, bend the knees, Hands are straight. I like to keep my hands inside my knees. Fingers are spread. And just look at that space between the hands. When you do this pose, you do not want to look completely down because nature has it. Murphy's Law, you're going to fall into a somersault. So I'm going to shift my weight forward. Elbows bend. Look forward. Come on out. I'm going to do this a few times. 
Um, there are other variations of this. This is the one I feel stable in. Elbows bend slightly. They become a shell for my inner knees. Shift, look forward. Come on out. Shift, look forward, maybe pick up one toe. Come on out. And for some reason, I don't love this variation. I'm going to get rid of the block. Some people say this helps you. You tell me which version you like better. I'm going to come back into a little squat on my ball of my feet. Hands land. Shh. I'm up on the balls of my toes. Shift forward, look forward. And today, my brain isn't stable today, so I'm not spending too long in the crow. For some reason, crow is really um, intimidating for some people. A true yoga practice would be, I would tell you to take that pose then and that be your homework today. We're gonna come onto the mat and just do a quick Marichi's pose series just to help the spine for the rest of the weekend. And then we will finish. So, Marichi's pose, spinal twist. I'm gonna sit with my legs extended in Dandasana. This is the gentlest, simplest version. Right hand to left knee, left hand beside me or behind me, but I'm working on my shoulders being in the same direction as my legs. So right now my shoulders are perpendicular to my legs. With the spinal twist, without hurting anything, I'm wringing out the body like a towel. So I'm gonna look forward, flex the feet, left shoulder back, and eventually look over that left shoulder. Option to turn and look over the right shoulder if your neck is comfortable, and back to center. Roll out the ankles, let's do the other side. Left hand, right knee, right hand beside me, finally walks it behind me. Today I'm feeling the most twist happening in the mid back behind my sternum or solar plexus. Twist, 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 looking forward. Option to look over that left shoulder, looking over the right shoulder, twist, 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 where does it feel good? And come back to center. There are two more versions of it. Right leg bends over. See you. Right leg, right hand inside right leg. Hand behind me. So I'm either twisting and then I want to add the head. I'm going to look over the left shoulder. Back to center. Counter twist. Keeping the knee, right knee up and down. I'm either coming into a bind. Oh, yeah. No, sorry, a mudra. Twist, twist, twist. Looking over the right shoulder. And back to center. Roll up the ankles. One more side, left leg over right. Let's take left hand inside. Twist. Counter twist. Back to center, shake it out. Our last version, depending on your hips, left leg down, right leg over. Whoa, so tight. So in this situation, my hips being squared off, my sits bones on the mat, more important than getting this right foot to the floor. So I'm gonna put a block under there. Left hand inside right thigh, twist, looking over the right shoulder. Back to center, counter twist. What's amazing about this twist is it happens quite naturally when even when I'm sitting at a desk. The body does what it needs. Pets, if you watch them, they, they stretch how they need. No one needs to instruct them. Back to center, shake it out. One last side. <clears throat> right leg on the bottom, left leg on the top. Sit, so I've gotta make sure that the hips are squared up and you feel my left foot needs this block to support. I'm gonna bring right arm inside. Twist, counter twist. And I'm probably doing this too quickly, and I want you to take what you need from this class, make it longer, stronger, and more involved in your own um, pace. So today we'll do a wisdom for healing card. Uh, 50 lessons of personal empowerment. So if you enjoy some of the cards we've been doing, there is a store, is it called Daylin? on the outside of Nature's Emporium, and they may have moved it inside Nature's Emporium because of COVID. 
Um, there are, um, I like that one, see the synchronicity. There are lots of different boxes online on hayhouse.com, on shambhala.com, and also in that store, crystal shops, health food stores. So today I randomly just pulled this one and I'm always talking about synchronicity. And that's cool. This woman has a, a loom and she's weaving. So I love that visual of everything woven, interconnected together. The strings from one part of your life come and will weave with another part of your life. Today's lesson, take note of all the synchronistic, synchronistic happenings and coincidences that occur in one day and know that nothing happens by accident. Your goal is to appreciate the divine details that are woven throughout every moment of our life. And I think that the scientific kind of person can say, well, they're just coincidences. But I think life is more magical when we can say there are no coincidences and the universe does have a plan for us. It gives us hope that everything that happens, happens for a reason. Thank you so much for your effort, attention, practice. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.